Hi guys, Dr. Crafts here with the first of a series of really short videos that will summarize each of our lectures. These are totally optional. You don't have to listen to them if you don't want to. There's no new information in here. They're just summaries um, for um, your use as you see fit. So you might use them to preview lectures if you had time, or you might use them um, as you're studying for an exam. If you do end up using them and you find them helpful, let me know. That would be that would be great. And let me know what I could change to make them more useful to you guys. So we're going to start out talking about the pituitary gland because it's really the the boss of all the other endocrine organs. It's, it releases hormones that, that uh, cause most of the other end organs to do something. And we're going to talk about, as we go through each of these organs, we're going to talk about diseases, obviously, and we're going to break them down into our usual neoplasms and non-neoplastic diseases. And we're also going to have a kind of an added wrinkle. When we talk about endocrine pathology, we're going to talk about diseases that make too much hormone and those that cause the end organ to release too little of its hormone. So that's kind of a theme that, that will run through each of our lectures. The endocrine system is kind of cool in that it has these multiple levels of control. You've got the end organ itself, this thyroid gland here, and the end organ is controlled usually by the pituitary gland, which secretes hormones that either stimulate or inhibit release of hormones from the end organ. And the pituitary gland, in turn, is controlled by the hypothalamus, which has its own little um, stimulating and inhibiting hormones that it releases to tell the pituitary what to do. So a bunch of different um, feedback loops going on here. So if you have somebody with an endocrine abnormality, they have too little thyroid hormone around, for example, you have to figure out whether the problem is in the, the end organ itself, in the thyroid gland, in which you call it, in which case you call it a primary disease, or maybe the problem is somewhere else in the pituitary or hypothalamus. It's, it's pretty rare to have hypothalamic issues. Those would be called tertiary diseases. Um, more common is um, to have a problem in the pituitary gland. Those are called secondary diseases. The pituitary gland, really small organ. It's about the size of a big pea. It's amazing considering all the stuff that it does. It's got two different lobes, which is weird because they're kind of like two different organs smashed together. There's this anterior lobe, which um, comes from the oral ectoderm. Both, both lobes come from ectoderm. The anterior lobe comes from the ectoderm in the mouth, from something called the uh, Rathke's pouch. And it kind of moves up toward, into the brain in a little kind of a outpouching. The posterior lobe is smaller, and it comes from neural ectoderm. It comes from the base of the developing brain. And there's a little pouch that, that moves down, and it kind of meets up with the anterior lobe, and it, both get kind of pushed together, and they have this little stalk that leads up to the hypothalamus. The anterior lobe is really a, a glandular organ, so if you look at it under the microscope, you can see that it's got this glandular structure. And it's really where most of the action is. When we talk about endocrine uh, diseases of the pituitary gland, we're almost always talking about diseases that happen in the anterior lobe. And so um, it's important for you to remember, obviously, which hormones are secreted by which lobes, but you can kind of just remember that the anterior lobe secretes almost everything. And you should probably also know which cells secrete which hormone. So you've got these cells that are kind of bluish. Those are called basophils. Um, some are kind of reddish. Those are called acidophils. And some don't stain at all. Those are called chromophobes. Like they're afraid of the stain. And uh, if you want a little mnemonic, um, a good one to remember is B-flat. So basophils secrete FSH, LH, ACTH, and TSH. And then you can just remember that the acidophils secrete everything else, which is growth hormone and prolactin. The chromophobes don't really secrete anything. The posterior lobe is really more of a neural organ. It comes from neural ectoderm. And so it's got these kind of neural looking cells that are kind of long and spindly. And these cells don't secrete hormone, or they don't, they don't make hormone. They store hormone that's made by the hypothalamus. So the two hormones they store are ADH and oxytocin. Uh, and there's a couple syndromes that we'll talk about in class. Um, 
that, that can occur in patients, but really most of the attention is uh, focused on the anterior lobe when we talk about pituitary diseases. So two syndromes you can get, hyperpituitarism, hypopituitarism. Hyperpituitarism is when you have too much pituitary hormone, and again, we're just referring to the anterior pituitary. We kind of just forget about the poor posterior pituitary. So hyperpituitarism is too much of the anterior pituitary hormones, one or more. And there's a bunch of reasons you might get this, but the most common, and the one that we're just going to focus on um, almost exclusively in class, is pituitary adenoma. That's the one you should remember. Someone presents with too much pituitary hormone, it's probably going to be a pituitary adenoma. So pituitary adenomas are benign tumors of the pituitary, obviously. Here's an adenoma right here, great big thing, sitting here, bulging into the sphenoid sinus. The normal pituitary would be about this size. And there's a syndrome or a clinical symptom that you should remember for pituitary adenomas. Sometimes they come to clinical attention because of their hormone secretion. So they'll secrete TSH, for example, and the patient will become hyperthyroid. But sometimes they get big um, and before they secrete hormones, or they just don't secrete hormones very well at all, or maybe they don't make hormones. And in that case, they're going to present with mass effects, effects of this growing mass in the brain. And the symptom that you get with pituitary adenomas that you should remember is something called bilateral hemianopsia. It's just a fancy word meaning that you lose vision in the lateral visual fields of both eyes. And if you think about where pituitary adenomas are, they're sitting right in here, um, right next to the optic chiasm, which is right here. Um, so if you have a pituitary adenoma that's growing, it's going to start pushing on these optic nerves, and it's going to push first on the inner portion of the nerve, which supplies the outer portion of the visual fields. So the first thing to go is going to be this peripheral vision, the lateral visual fields. So that's why you get this, this uh, symptom, and it's really um, very characteristic of pituitary adenomas. I don't think there's many other things that cause that, so that's something to kind of put in the back of your head. If you see that on an exam or in real life, it's probably going to be a pituitary adenoma. Pituitary adenomas don't really look like anything at all, so there's not really a lot to remember about the histology. Hypopituitarism, just the opposite. You're making too little hormone, one or more hormones from the anterior pituitary. And there's a lot of reasons that you could get uh, hypopituitarism, and there isn't just one that jumps out like pituitary adenoma for hyperpituitarism. So we'll go through all these different um, lesions in class, um, but you should probably know just a little bit about, about each of these, with maybe the exception of the hypothalamus, because rarely things happen there. Most, most of the things that happen are within the pituitary itself. So that's it, really, for the pituitary gland. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can always email me. And if you have any suggestions um, for these recordings or for anything else that would help you as you're studying, um, it would be great if you could just drop me an email or catch me after class um, and let me know. Thanks for listening.